The Great Banquet. This podcast is a Bible study based on Matthew 22, 1 through 14. It requires no knowledge of Accordance Bible software, Hebrew, or Greek. Who doesn't love a great banquet? Free food, and generally lots of it, good company, entertainment, and no cleanup afterwards. What's not to love? Banquets were popular in biblical times too, as several passages in the Gospels indicate. Today we're going to study one such banquet, or maybe two. If you'd like to replicate today's study, you should know that it only uses resources included in Accordance 12's basic starter collection. The ESV Bible, Gospel Parallels, Allen, Outlines of Biblical Books, and the Erdman's Dictionary of the Bible. We'll also be using the following Accordance features, Parallel Tab, Highlighting, and the Info Pane. The study does require Accordance Desktop, however, as Parallels and the Parallel Tab will not work on current versions of Accordance Mobile. Jesus' parable of the Great Banquet appears twice in the Gospels, once in Matthew and again in Luke. When we have two versions of the same story or incident, we call them parallels. They are a wonderful resource, as they often offer additional information. Differences between them give us a better chance to understand the concerns of each author. Here's the Lucan version of this parable. When one of those who reclined at table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent a servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges, and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who are invited shall taste my banquet. It's easy to see if a parallel exists for a passage in accordance. We just have to check the info pane. If the category Parallel Passages appears, click the Disclosure Triangle to see where the parallels are. In this case, three different resources offer parallels. All three indicate the same two passages. Clicking on the title of any of them will open the parallel in a Parallels tab. Parallel Analysis The Parallels tab allows us to compare parallel passages side by side. In this case, there are only two parallels, and the differences between them are obvious enough we can see them in an English translation. If we wanted to switch to a different text, another translation, or even the Greek text, we can do it here. If instead we want to add an additional text to our parallel panes, we can do that here. Now, I found the easiest way to work with parallels is to use Accordance's highlights to mark the similarities and differences. In fact, I recommend making a highlight file just for use with various parallels. Mine is shown here. As you can see, it's rather simple. It uses lightly colored highlights to indicate the differences, darker colored outlines to indicate similarities. A dedicated parallel highlights file means I can display it when I'm working with parallels and turn it off the rest of the time. Now, the broad outlines of these two parables are strikingly similar. The reason most scholars consider them to be parallel. A man decides to host a large banquet and invite guests. Once the meal is ready, he sends his servants to announce the start of the banquet. At this point, both stories take an unexpected turn. When the banquet is ready, the invited guests now decline. Understandably, the host becomes angry. He then sends his servants to invite many others. So many of these others respond, the house is filled with guests. Both parables then conclude with a warning. The differences between these two parables lie mostly in the details. First, the host is different. Matthew's is a king, where Luke's is simply a man, the master of the house. 
Second, the meals are different. In Matthew, it's a wedding feast held in a wedding hall where people wore wedding garments, while Luke simply refers to it as a great banquet. Third, the response of the invitees is also startlingly different. Matthews either ignore the announcement or abuse and kill the messengers, while Luke simply make foolish excuses. After all, who bides a field or ten oxen and only inspects them afterward? And what new wife would enjoy dinner out? Likewise, the host's responses are very different. While both are angry, Matthew's king kills those who murdered his servants and burns their city, calling them not worthy. Luke's master of the household simply declares that none of those who received the initial invitation will ever attend the banquet. Both hosts also decide to invite alternate guests, but these two are different. The king sends his servants to the main road and invites everyone both good and bad. The householder charges his servants to invite the poor and disabled from the lesser city roads, then, when they are not enough, extends the invitation to those on the highways and hedges. Should we understand these people as the itinerants and homeless? I should also point out that only the parable in Matthew describes what is being served at the feast, roasted oxen or or bulls and fatted calves. The final difference is the last section in Matthew, which has no parallel in Luke. It's the sorting of the guests, anticipated by the earlier statement that both the good and the bad were invited. Here, a man without a wedding garment is expelled from the feast. Now, I'm sure there are other differences as well, but let's examine what we've already identified. Here's a summary of our analysis. Matthew and Luke have the following items in common. A male head of household hosts a banquet. He invites guests ahead of time. The initial invitees then refuse to attend. The host becomes angry. He sends his servants to invite others. The alternate guests accept. The house is then filled with guests. The parable then ends with a warning. Now, the two parables vary in the following details. Matthew has a wedding feast, while Luke a great banquet. Matthew has hosted by the king. Luke hosted by the master of the household. In Matthew, the invitees ignore, abuse, or kill the messengers. In Luke, they make foolish excuses for their absence. In Matthew, the host then kills the invitees and burns their city, while in Luke, the host then prohibits invitees from attending. In Matthew, the host then invites everyone, both good and bad. In Luke, they invite the poor and disabled. In Matthew, those new guests come from the main roads, while in Luke, from the streets and lanes, highways and hedges. In Matthew, the menu includes oxen and fatted calves, while Luke gives us no idea what kind of menu is being served. In Matthew, a final scene where a guest is expelled, which is missing in Luke. Now, before we draw any conclusions, let's check these two parables' literary contexts. Literary Analysis By literary analysis in this case, I mean literary context comparing the position of the narratives in the respective Gospels. First, let's open the Lucan parable in a separate zone to facilitate that. Here's a technique I usually use to do that. Click the plus button for another tab and select ESV from Recents. Then, type the appropriate verse reference into the Go To box. I then click the tab header and drag it into a new zone. The result looks like this. Once again, our analysis is going to begin with the info pane. If we click the pericope title for each passage, each will open the outlines of biblical books to the respective passage. The result looks like this, with our passages at the top of each pane. Now, we'll need to untie the scrolling for these two panes so we can move them without moving the biblical passages. Here's the result of some careful scrolling. The Matthew parable under Jesus enters Jerusalem the seventh of nine pericopes in that section, while the Lucan account is in a section on Jesus' teaching about the kingdom, the fifth of six pericopes. They are also in very different places in the two Gospels. The former is in chapter 22 of 28 in Matthew. The latter is in chapter 14 of Luke's 24. Matthew places this parable after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Luke places it during Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. Secondary Literature As long as we're investigating literary context, there's another avenue we can explore, the themes of each book. 
It's an even larger literary context question than the relative placement of each parallel in its respective book. There's a question we need to address. Can the observed differences between these two passages be explained by the different emphases of each author? Let's check a Bible Dictionary article on each book, which ought to list its major themes. We can do that easily, again using the info pane, by clicking the book link under Topics, Text. The two clicks opened this resource in a different zone, which was too small to read easily. So I moved each tab into the zone for its respective book. I also found I had to turn recycling off after the first click, so I could keep the first article even while searching for the second. A Bible dictionary isn't the best resource for this task, by the way, though it is the one everyone has in their accordance library and the one to which the info pane links. Once here, it is also relatively easy to switch to another Bible dictionary if the first one doesn't include enough detail. The Erdman's Dictionary is a fine resource, though I'm particularly fond of the IVP Bible dictionaries, as they often provide state-of-the-field scholarship. However, they may also provide too much information for some. In general, though, the very best resource would be an introduction of the New Testament, which would provide a fuller description of each book. If you own one of these resources, it should be located in your Biblical Studies Library folder. Happily, it is almost as easy to switch to this kind of resource as it is a different Bible dictionary. The last step in this process would be to check commentaries on each passage. We can also do this easily from the info pane, clicking on each in turn. Now the starter collection includes only the one volume New Bible Commentary and the abridged Matthew Henry's Commentary. Now, if you're interested in consulting more commentaries and currently only have Accordance's starter, consider the next level up in Accordance's collections, the English Learner. It includes two commentary series, Tyndale Commentaries and the Bible Knowledge Commentary, each of which cover the entire Bible. Conclusions and Questions After consulting some introductions and a few commentaries about Matthew and Luke's tendencies, I'm now ready to make my final analysis and draw some conclusions. A close examination of these two parables reveals that they now have different messages, messages in keeping with the overall themes of the gospel in which they now reside. In Matthew, we can say that the parable has been eschatologically heightened. It is now about God's wedding banquet for the Messiah. It looks something like this. God sent many servants, prophets, with invitations. The Jews rejected God and His Son. Some ignored Him, Others murdered his messengers. Therefore, he killed them and destroyed Jerusalem. God then invited the Gentiles, who accepted in great numbers. However, the parable concludes with a warning to the Gentile church, good works are still required. Luke, on the other hand, has an entirely different take. His parable is weighted towards social concerns. It's God's open invitation to table fellowship. God's servant, Jesus, invited many people, the wealthy rejected him. They gave foolish excuses. So, he invited the poor, the disabled, itinerant, and homeless. They accepted in great numbers. Conclusion? Those primarily interested in material wealth are not welcome. Are these stories then two different parables? We can probably never know for sure, but here are three common conclusions. First, they are two entirely different parables. Similarities between them are merely coincidental. Second, they are variations of the same parable. Jesus probably told it time and time again during his itinerant teaching ministry, changing it as needed in each new situation. Each gospel writer chose the variant most suited to his gospel. And third, they are the same parable, one which each gospel writer has adapted or interpreted according to the needs of his audience. Since all three conclusions are based on exactly the same evidence, I think it's safe to say that the conclusion one reaches is based largely on one's theological assumptions. Good Bible study requires good techniques and reliable resources. Accordance helps us with both. The info pane in particular is a huge help, as many of our customers have told us. I trust you've enjoyed today's study of Bible parallels and that it will inspire you to do some of your own. This has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp.